Good morning, everyone. Great to see your faces bright and early. And welcome to AI Now, the expert workshop edition. My name's Kate Crawford. I'm a principal researcher at Microsoft Research in New York and a senior research fellow here at NYU in the Information Law Institute. And I'm Meredith Whitaker. I'm the founder and lead of Google Open Research, and we are so honored that you can join us today. We're really hoping this is a foundational discussion about the role of AI in social and economic systems here and now. So before we get into that, I want to start with some sincere thanks to the people who made this day happen. To our research team, Madeline Clara Lish, Solon Barakas, Aaron Plasic, and Khadija Ferryman in this room. To our, our production staff, Mariah Peebles and Alejandro Calcano. To our program committee, Eric Horvitz, Helen Nissenbaum, Nicole Wong, Latanya Sweeney, Mustafa Suleiman, and Ryan Kahlo. And to our host, NYU's Information Law Institute, and finally to the White House, whose vision we'll hear more about throughout the day. We'd also like to thank you. Take a moment to just look around the room for a minute. Around you are 100 academics, policymakers, industry leaders, and commentators who we are so delighted to have here because we see that you are the people at the front lines of some of the hard decisions that will need to be made around artificial intelligence in the next five to 10 years. Um, we've specifically chosen that time frame so we can take a kind of granular perspective of the problems we can see emerge now as well as the potentials. Sadly, that means we won't be talking about the singularity today and we won't be addressing our robot overlords, I apologize. <laughs> but we certainly feel like we will have a full program nonetheless. This is actually a critical time for this discussion, even if artificial intelligence is feeling relatively new. It's actually got a long history, but certainly the recent advancements in machine learning and the attendant public excitement is sort of pushing it into the spotlight in a range of new ways. And we're certainly seeing this explosion of debate and different definitions. We are not here to litigate a specific definition today. Instead, we're going to try and make this much more substantially about the issues and hopefully open up to multiple perspectives that come from all of the different people in this room with all of their different backgrounds. So in the end, what we're really going to hope for today is that we can look at the way in which AI is being integrated across multiple areas of human life. And this is the right time to ask those particularly hard questions. But which areas do you choose? Obviously, you could start anywhere. So what we've done is we've narrowed it down to just four domains. Well, today, we'll be talking about social inequality, health, labor and ethics. Now, the reason we chose those is because these are domains where we're already starting to see the impacts of artificial intelligence now. So what you will also see is that this day is really meant to address those issues, but also magnify your views. So there's going to be lots of opportunities to get your voice into this debate. And the other great thing is that in this room are the people designing those systems. So you really are speaking to both policymakers and the people on the ground designing artificial intelligence today. Also, the people in this room are drawn from very different perspectives, and we've got this really engaging day to help you meet each other and find out what those perspectives are. Our only request is that you keep your mind open, that you keep your devices locked in so far as you can, and that you maintain a commitment to listen across these different perspectives and practices. So before we get started, I'm just going to give you a quick run of show. This is a jam-packed day with a lot of exciting things, and I'm going to tell you what you're in for. In a moment, we're going to begin with opening remarks from two of President Obama's chief advisors on these topics, Ed Felton, Deputy U.S. Chief Technology Officer at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, and Jason Furman, Chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, where he serves as President Obama's chief economist. And following this, we're going to jump right into two sets of lightning talks. So get ready. This is going to be 12 lightning talks, rapid fire, drawn from a lot of diverse people in the room. And these are meant to spark ideas and discussions. So this is the morning section. You're going to be absorbing a lot of content. You're going to be thinking. You're going to be engaging. And then after lunch, we're going to transition to a discussion section. This is where people can begin to contribute and talk and define and think about these issues and really offer their voice. So we, we come back from lunch and we have questions and answers and some discussion with the whole group. We're really talking, we're thinking about these issues and, and we're expressing ideas in relation to the talks. And then we're moving into our breakout groups. Now, all of you have be, been assigned a topic area. You'll find this on your badge. And you're going to be in the breakout group for that topic area. You have also been emailed a copy of the primers produced by our research team, and this grounds the discussion in some of the big questions, questions related to these topic areas. 
We'll come back from these breakout groups. We'll say a quick thank you, and then we'll have some time in the hallway with some light refreshment to meet each other, to say hi to people we haven't seen before we get to the big event. And this is the public symposium at Skirball tonight, where we're going to hope to amplify and magnify some of the discussion that happened today, introducing some, some, some other perspectives from the White House, from civil society, from academia, and from industry. And then finally, you are all invited to the VIP cocktail reception following the big, the big event. You so. will have earned a drink, I think, by yeah. that point. So yeah, so we'll be back in this space. It will be magically transformed for you. So without further ado, I want to introduce Ed Felton, Deputy Chief, Chief Technology Officer, to give you a perspective on the White House's vision and leadership on the topic of AI. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. This is an impressive group, and uh, I'm eager to hear from uh, today's speakers and learn from all of you. So I won't have that much to say myself right now. Uh, I want to thank um, the organizers and supporters of, uh, this, uh, of this event today. Um, that includes, of course, uh, Kate and Meredith, as well as all of the folks that, uh, that they thanked. Uh, it is really valuable for us to be able to participate in this event and hear from all of you. Uh, we also look forward to tonight's event, which we at the White House uh, OSTP and National Economic Council are co-sponsoring with, uh, with NYU. Um, so uh, with that, uh, let me move to uh, introducing our next speaker, Jason Furman. One of the real pleasures for me on coming to the White House was learning about the Council of Economic Advisors. Um, as a computer scientist who has been interested for a long time in how we in our profession can positively impact government and work on public policy issues, I think we have a lot to learn from economists. And uh, CEA is one of the best examples, I think, of the way that uh, deep expertise can effectively influence and improve the policy process. Uh, I was very pleased as we were kicking off our, uh, our policy initiative on the future of AI. Uh, that we had such a wonderful resource of people able to look at the issues of economics and the impact on jobs and income inequality and so on uh, from a really deep and uh, way that is academic in the best sense and also focused on the issues that really matter to people. And much of that, I think, is down to the leadership of Jason as the chair of, of CEA. So I won't... Uh, give you a detailed version of Jason's resume, but I do want to mention one prior job that he had that I think has helped to prepare him for his current job, and that is uh, working down the street in Washington Square Park as a juggler in his younger <laughs> days. And um, don't do it now, please, but later you might want to Google Jason Furman juggling, and you'll find something that is both entertaining and very charming. Um, so with that, uh, let me introduce my, uh, uh, my colleague, Jason Furman, and uh, please join me in welcoming him. <laughs> 